This is David the Inspector. Hey, hey, Aptera fans. You are watching Positively Charged EV Channel, Drive the Lightning. This channel with Drive the Lightning, the Positively Charged EV Channel. We're here with David the Inspector of David the Inspector YouTube fame. David, thanks for taking the time to be here. We really appreciate it. I've been trying to get you to do this, by the way, for about a month. And when I would oh, send boy. you messages through your channel, like through comments, I think because I put my email address in there, it would probably block it. So oh. thank goodness we finally got together. And thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for patiently waiting and paying attention to my tiny channel. It's awesome to be here with Chad with Drive the Lightning, the Positively Charged channel. That's Truly right. appreciate you having me on. Thank you, David. Hey, will you explain to everybody your association with Aptera? Like, what are what is the company to you? What are you to the company? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, basically, I'm a big fan. Um, I started following them back uh, at their old hybrid version back when, you know, Popular Mechanics and uh, saw their original version with uh, Jay Leno, right? And I got really excited for that 300-mile range uh, hybrid back then. But then I didn't really know what happened to it. Um, it was actually a video um, on YouTube, um, Rich Rebuilds, and oh, yeah. he was visiting Aptera, I and that's that what brought me back on board. I found out that, hey, there's they're still around. And so basically from there, um, I later became uh, an ambassador, uh, oh, also cool. invested a little bit myself. And um, yeah, happy to help out with the events. Um, recently in San Francisco is my first time officially helping. So it's 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 been a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I saw on your channel earlier where you, I think it might've been almost a year ago now, where you went to the factory and toured the factory there. And then of course, I've been following your, your videos recently on the San Francisco event. So I'm going to want to ask you some specifics about those, but let's go back to when you, and am I right? Was that about a year ago you were in Carlsbad? Yeah. Yeah. About a year ago. Yeah. G give me an idea of, of if, if you can, what it was like for you to walk in the factory and start seeing the people and the product and the process and, and what did that do for your confidence that this, as hard as startups are, that this one can can maybe make it to the finish line? Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm so happy I was able to get out there. It was a very rainy day. Um, I was contacting contacts of contacts and eventually got in. So I'm really glad it happened. Um, I've worked for very small companies in the past before and very small operations are able to, you know, make millions of dollars in construction. So to come to a place um, that's this well established and uh, to meet some of the folks in real life, they're, they're all very passionate. It's like a passion project for most of them, um, which I think is true for most of us fans as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot more there than I was able to photograph and record. Um, but I truly appreciate that they openly showed us everything. I saw some of the test mules and things that only got revealed recently. Um, so it was really nice to see some of that coming along, uh, seeing the R&D. There was folks there working even on a rainy day. Wow, cool. We were there two years ago when they when they um, revealed the Gamma, you know, the latest of the prototype. And we, we found something similar. We walked in, we went to the table. It was like an ambassador event. We're not ambassadors. But they had, they had us, uh, Sarah Hardwick invited us as press. And they had a little thing for us there. But instantly they that. grabbed us. They said, hey, we know you and Sarah. Let's show you the offices. Let's show you this. Let's show you that. We felt like, you know, they made us feel like we were CNN or something, you know, like we were a big deal. Yeah. And here I am running around <laughs> with my camera on a little tripod, like my phone or a GoPro <laughs> or something. It's like, they're just really cool people. That passion uh, that they have really comes through. It really comes through in your videos. So yeah. the San Francisco event that you went to, uh, a couple of things that I saw in your video. One is the lady with the oar for her kayak or her canoe or whatever it was. Can you explain what her deal was? Because I know you got a chance to talk to her up close. Yeah, we did a little bit. Um, so uh, me and my wife, along with Drew from Tillisiv. Hello, Drew. We were hey, Drew. helping uh, folks <laughs> into the Aptera. And while that was happening, I noticed someone out in the line with the big old pole. Um, so I went over there, asked my wife to cover for me and I asked her what she was doing. So that's where my little, uh, recording came from. And basically she had a nine and a half foot oar uh, that she was going to try to see if it fit in the Aptera. So I kind of waited for her through the line and captured the events and, uh, it fit. 
and with extra space as well. So yeah, that was kind of shocking to me, especially since um, you know, it's far longer than the seven feet that we normally think of for the right. back storage. Yeah, we think from the back of the back seat to the tail, but she she went up onto the dashboard and having having moved many times and a lot of times just own small cars, you do what you have to do to get the stuff <laughs> done, you know? So that was a yeah, pretty cool yeah. thing. What are some of the other things that you saw maybe that haven't yet been revealed? Well, what was very neat is um, I was just kind of awestruck seeing the uh, production intent seats right away. Right. So right. me and my wife got there real early. Um, Chris was there a little bit later. They actually used the Gamma to bring a lot of the event materials in the trunk. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it's 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 a working vehicle. And when we took out the Bink, it was also being used to store materials where I, where I caught sight of the production intent seats. So that was really neat. I think Drew has a little video of, of me and Chris McCammon pulling the plastic off of those things. Um, but it was very nice to see the, the final version of the fabric. That was something that kind of took me by surprise. Um, it was hard to stay in work mode while you're still excited about the thing that you're touching. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, it had to be, you had to be like a total geek fest for you, Andrew. Oh, yeah. And Dave Huerta, Absolutely. the Molinars, everybody else that was helping there. So what about yeah. the crowds? Now, I've seen the best view I've seen of the crowd so far, David, is on your channel when you you reposted the Instagram live that Audrey was doing. Do I have that right? Yeah, that was Audrey. Yeah. So that crowd just kept going and going and going. Did you wait till everybody was through that? Did I mean, was everybody that was in line able to sit in the Aptera or did you have to at some point cut people off? Good question. I was actually um, only able to stay till 2 p.m. Unfortunately, I you know I drove in from Vegas, but um, from what I understand, everyone got through in time. In fact, the fact that the line was long is kind of my <laughs> my fault because they're asking us, okay, 30 seconds a person, you know, uh, to try to get them in and out. But everyone, everyone's awestruck at seeing this vehicle for the first time. It's really difficult to you know, pull them in, pull them out in 30 seconds. But um, yeah, it was quite expansive. Yeah, you um, want to make sure somebody goes over 30 seconds. All you have to do is say you only have 30 seconds. That guarantees they're going to go a minute and a half because we're people. That's it. If we don't fit in yep. boxes too good. You know, we just... Yeah, yeah, and you know what? Everyone wanted to try the knock-knock, which uh, also took a couple moments, but it was so much fun. Um, opening up the doors, opening up the trunk, and and it it worked Every single time, um, every once in a while, I had to reach in and hit the little button, you know, if, uh, if the car had a little bit too much movement. So that's something that was kind of interesting when there's a lot of noise and knocks on the car in yeah. general. Uh, then sometimes I had to hit the little button inside. But, yeah, it was, mm. it was a lot of fun to see that that open up. So I asked this to Dave Huerta and Jerry Molnar their best impressions on price. And they kept going back to what was being said at the event over and over and over, you know, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties. And I understand that that's the target. I get it. And that's a beautiful target. And I tried to tell them that my thought is from everything I've seen interviews with Steve Fombro and other things that we're probably looking at a $50,000 car for the first, I don't know, thousand or something. Uh, so, so I gave them this opportunity too. Am I crazy? Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say because I have heard both ends of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know where we are, uh, financially in the production of the vehicle. So okay. they have hinted many times they're going to, you know, charge a little bit more. However, I think by the time some of the folks numbers come up like us, um, it may have already dropped in price. My guess, it's only a guess, it's its not okay. even an educated guess, <laughs> is that uh, during, during the accelerator section where folks who might be a little more liquid and able to help out and have already proved that they want to support the company, perhaps they might be helping to shoulder some of the initial costs. Uh, and that's the first, you know, 2000 vehicles, right? right. So we're going to have uh, a pretty good amount of, of help from them. My guess is after that, we could start to see a little bit of a decrease when it actually starts coming to the regular 
um, consumers, maybe some ambassadors who may have had some credits and whatnot. So that's that's my guess. Now, what the number is going to be, um, I'm guessing around 40, which is what I've heard. Okay. But I've also heard 35 quite often. So I'm guessing somewhere in between there. Okay. Well, we will find out at the same time, I'm sure. I'm guessing closer to 50. Myself, and I am not a, a wealthy person, but myself, it's worth 50,000, 49,99, whatever. I'd buy the, and, and people have, I'm going to get some bad messages, but I'd buy the up tier before I'd buy a Corvette, before I'd buy a Mustang. I mean, people are going to spend $65,000 on a loaded Mach E, uh, which I would do if I could afford it. I'd buy an Aptera before I'd buy that. That's me. That's me. It's such a specialized vehicle. Uh, but I do think that that 35000 is, you know, you're looking at massive amount of people would want it. But don't you think, and maybe I'm wrong again, but don't you think that there's 20,000 people out there on that list that's approaching 50 that would pay more for this car, thus get to uh, profitability sooner, get to mass production sooner? You know, it's early adopter tax. I pay it on everything myself. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Absolutely. Not? Absolutely. I mean, we're not the deciders. I'm just, you know, it's just in my head. I'm thinking, let's just start at 49.99. And then when it's time, you know, when it starts to, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Thanks for yeah, I mean, going down the rabbit hole with me. Yeah, no, of course. We've seen it happen. We've, we've seen it happen with a lot of other launch vehicles. Rivian has done it. Obviously, uh, Cybertruck has done it as well. You know, right. Um, and for those who are passionate about the project, I mean, we have we have major investors. I, I wouldn't see any issue with ones who want to support it and to be able to, you know, help by yeah. paying a more premium fee. That's right. Okay, good. I'm glad we cleared that up. So that's the <laughs> final word. David, the inspector said, hey, uh -oh. just pay what you got to pay and don't complain <laughs> about it. So how do you feel about the momentum of the company for, now that you've had a couple of opportunities to be there in person with the team? You see the vehicle, hear them talking to people. What do you think about the momentum? Where is it going from here? Yeah, I mean, just from my visit last year, I didn't get to see the Gamma then. I think it was out on tour. But okay. just from my visit last year to this year, it it is rolling so fast now. All the pieces are there, really. Mm. Um, and when we were there at the Neon event, there was a lot there for the event. But even before that, there was just tons of passerbys that were stopping and looking and asking questions just having the exposure is moving it so quickly and now that the pieces are here literally <laughs> in yeah. carl's bed um it, you can see the machine is is really speeding up so i'm i'm very excited to see it and i am confident in in 2025 for those deliveries so david the inspector that's your youtube channel you started making videos about how long ago regarding aptera uh it's been been a couple of years now i think about year and a half, maybe two years. Yeah. Some of the first ones I saw and I really, really liked, it seems like you were kind of at work. You might've even been wearing yeah. high vis gear, but you're just sitting yeah. in your car and you're just talking. And I'm like, Hey, it's just a regular guy. I'm just talking to David here. I thought those videos yeah. were so good. I really liked those. And then these <laughs> last ones you've made uh, where you showed what you saw there in, in San Francisco. Excellent stuff. Is that an oh. awesome clock? That is amazing. That's like one Time of a machine. kind. No, nobody has this. One of our channel members, Norman, made this for us. Hey, yeah, amazing. Norman, great work. That's awesome. Yeah, he's so cool. We got the we got the coolest. And, and that's another thing I want to ask you about the community that follows Aptera. How have you found them in your comments? Those that watch your channel, have you found the community to be something that you want to be a part of? Oh, absolutely. The community is very supportive. I mean, most of us are not here because we're trying to make money. Most right. of us are here because we're passionate about um, the ecology. Maybe we're passionate about efficiency. Maybe we just like futuristic looking vehicles. But um, most of the um, the Aptera um, community, we can call it, have been very positive and excited. Yeah. And, and money is usually the last thing on our mind. Uh, <laughs> so it's been really neat to see supportive channels like yourself, you know, calling out little creators, uh, and we're really working together to hopefully get this vehicle on the road. I think it's funny. We all subscribe to each other. There's no, there's no competition. I mean, Aptera owners club is number one. You're never going to catch Steve because he was there early. And he does a fantastic job. 
and he deserves all them subscribers. And then the rest of us, we're doing what we do, but we all seem to support each other and, and, and link with each other. And I like Jeff the Ninja is one of my favorite. I yeah. love Rich Rodriguez. <laughs> I love all these people. They're just fun to watch. It's just great. Your channel's fantastic. So keep up the good work, David. We appreciate Thank you and so what much. you do. So, David, what can we look forward to in the next few videos from your channel? Uh, well, before we get into that, there's a few things that I had teased in the past that may not have come to fruition yet. And I wanted to explain. Okay, go for it. So one was the Archimodo video. Uh, so I wanted to go out and visit them. So I actually did reach out to Archimodo, lovely community as well. Um, I found a local dealer who promised to get back to me and schedule a time. And I'm still waiting. So <laughs> whenever that happens, um, you, we will get a video, but uh, it's okay. about two years in the making. Um, the other one is Zooks. Uh, we have right. Zooks right here in town near us. Where we could actually see their production and tent vehicle cruising around oh. our neighborhood pretty often. Um, but apparently stopping uh, self-driven vehicles is a little harder than I thought it would be. So <laughs> you just jump in front of them, David. They have to stop. Just jump in front of it. I wasn't it. holding cones, so I was afraid. A right orange cone <laughs> will cripple it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did reach out to them by email. Zooks, if you're listening, I would love to give a ride in your vehicle, talk about the experience. I'm supportive of the uh, of your version of the Robo Taxi. I'd love to mm -hmm. see what it can do, but it's right here in my neighborhood. So I would I would love to uh, give my experience on that. But so waiting awesome. to hear back from them as well. Stay on them. So what's the next couple of videos out of your channel? What are we looking for? Next couple of videos are coming from the Far East. We're hoping to look at BYD while I'm in China next week. Uh, see if we could find some of their cost-efficient vehicles. Seagull is one of the main ones I'm looking for. I like uh, the Neo. I hope you get a chance to see the Neo. You've heard of those in China? I, have, ones that, uh, I, I have not yet. They do battery swapping. In three oh, minutes. yes. I have heard. Yes. Yeah. So if you see one of those, please get me a picture. That's one of my favorite companies to watch from a distance is Neo. And they have a little personal Taking assistant it. on the dashboard, like a, you know, it's not Alexa, but it's, you know, that kind of thing where you could talk to it. Oh, yeah, uh, the right little in, robot. I've yeah, a little that, robot yeah. head right on the dashboard. Um, also, as you know, the Aptera vehicle motor, the EMR3, is already found in China. So we're going to try to track down that motor, look at it inside of a working a vehicle of a large manufacturer. I know that uh, Hyundai is currently driving around in it in China. So hopefully we can get some first person footage of what the motor can really do. Excellent. We'll look forward to that. That sounds awesome. Check out Dave the Inspector's channel. In fact, you can go to this video right here and you can see the video where he watched the lady put the ore in the Aptera and he's got more videos soon to come from that event. So check it out. I subscribe. You should subscribe. <laughs> okay. Subscribe. Yeah. I like it.